Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash ham nation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 199 for June 3rd, 2015. Special event stations have created a huge pileup. Good evening, everybody. It's a very special week of amateur radio, and this is Ham Nation. We're going to tell you all about it, and we've got a lot of people here to help us do that. I'm Bob Heil, K9EID, coming to you from the Ozarks tonight through our Exceed satellite system. And uh, we're going to go talk to Gordo down in Costa Mesa, and we're going to talk to Al up in the good old East Coast, and we're going to see about talking to Don. Let's see what we got. Gordo, how you doing? I am fine, Bob. And look at this, CQ, right on time, June issue. We are delighted that CQ has made <laughs> it through and is now back on schedule. And speaking of schedule, if you want to do some operating aboard a submarine, the USS Batfish, high and dry but fully operational in Tulsa, Oklahoma, will be on the air all this weekend, <clears throat> along with CPAC. That's the big convention in Seaside, Oregon, June 5, 6, and 7. And on the East Coast to join Al is Limark, Long Island Mobile Amateur Radio Club, on Sunday at Briar Cliff College at Bethpage, New York. They are having their big Sunday swap and exhibitors and uh, contesting and card checking. Limark is making it happen. So it looks like a big weekend ahead. And then in weekend after next, I'll see everybody at Hamcom in the Irving, Texas area. I'll be there. See you in Texas weekend after next. Bob, back to you. All right, Gordo, and then we've had such a great week with this special event station. Next week will be the 200th show that we have produced here on the Twit Network. 200, that's just amazing. Wow. And, and it, to celebrate that, we've had a great, uh, sh a really great special event station uh, operation. And uh, one of the creators of that is Al, K1LTJ, the big signal from signal. out east. Al, how are you? I'm fine, Bob. I'm uh, a little exhausted uh, from operating the special event, <laughs> but it has been great fun. It's far beyond anything we ever thought it would be. And everybody is reporting having a great time. Well, one of my one of my wonderful feelings about this is that it's been so so nice. I haven't heard any big problems. Usually when you have anything like this, you have all kinds of problems and people trying to get in there and cause trouble. No, I haven't heard any of that. Uh, and, and I'm really happy about that. And I guess it shows the uh, camaraderie of, uh, of the Ham Nation audience. It's really great. And uh, uh, this probably will be a a little bit of what's been going on for you that missed it. This is one of the pileups. Radio Zero Papa. <laughs> and what you have to listen to, yeah, there's two or three that's going to be on the top, but listen to the multitude down at noise level. There's there's probably a, a 50, 60, 100 of them. Why the pile them up there, Bob? Katie Zero <laughs> FW. And of course, the uh, the really cool thing were the QRP guys that I worked, and I really, uh, really uh, appreciated that. How did you do with uh, some of the QRP guys, Al? Did you work a lot of those? 
I worked quite a few, and I, you know, when somebody says, when I hear QRP, I go, oh, okay, let's do it. But uh, let me read you just a couple of lines here that I got from emails. I, n- I didn't expect this, but so, so many people got a little frustrated because they wanted to get the clean sweep. And uh, whoever you are, in my case, uh, W1H, you need W1H for the clean sweep. So I got an email from a guy and he said, uh, I need you. And I said, okay, fine, let's get on the air right now and I'll work you. And I got another email and another and another. And it's something, <laughs> it's something approaching... It's something approaching 200 emails. And let me just read you a couple of the lines because it's great. It was frustration because they want to lobby for for me getting on there and giving them a clean sweep. And gosh, I want to do it. You know, it's it's all I want to do. But And for the first five or ten, no problem. But when it got to be 200, I, it was impossible. So here's, here's some <laughs> of the lines. Need for clean sweep. Al, can you give less than 100 watt stations on the West Coast a chance? Al, you're in the noise when calling threes for southeastern PA, but you're five nine when you're calling the other areas. I've been trying for nine and a half hours. Uh, another guy <laughs> said, hello again, Al. I finally uh, worked you. You dropped down to 30, 3854 and 75. Um, you indicated that you logged me. Did you get, the, did you get it in the log right? And, of course, I, I did. And um, it, it's just email after email like that, expressing a little frustration and and, you know, how can I work you? I need the clean sweep. So much excitement about it. And um, uh, it just, it, it's still going on. I'm still getting emails. And we've got the last night. I'm going to be on until midnight tonight and uh, working as many people as I can to help you get that clean sweep. I've got all the emails. I've got your calls. I'm looking for you. I'm going to be on 20 and again on 75. And I'm going to try and get a little 40 meters in there. And here's my favorite part of an email. This was from Steve, my good friend Steve W7UDI, uh, who is one of our special event stations. And it, this was in an email I know you guys saw, but it's my favorite email quote. It said, how is everybody holding up? I felt like I was <laughs> rode hard and put away wet last night. And that, <laughs> that came from Steve. And um, I think we all kind of echo those sentiments. And, of course, then there's a story about Mike's amplifier having a problem, a loud explosion outside his window, calling the bomb squad because they found a hand grenade outside his window. And then uh, somebody, was, somebody was run over by an SUV in his yard this afternoon. And I learned that. Uh, on the way. That's a true story. And it, it, he's working the special event while this is all going on. He was texting me as I'm driving home from work. And he texted me a picture. He said, what do you think this is? I, I said, it looks like a hand grenade. He called the bomb squad. It was a hand grenade. Fortunately, it's not uh, dangerous. But somebody threw a hand grenade in his yard. And while the bomb squad was there, uh, someone got hit by an SUV who is OK, I guess. They took them off to the hospital and they're all right. So wow. that's just another part of the crazy special event. But the pilot have been, to me, to my ear, it sounded like Navasa. I mean, you know, not spread out yeah. over or, not spread out over 10 or 20 kilohertz, but still, it sounded just like Navasa. And so I'm right there with all the guys who feel that frustration. They want to work and get the, the, the special event, the clean sweep, and I want to give it to you. And I'm going to do my very best, and I'm going to stay up and use that the special event call right till midnight and work as many as possible. Thanks, everybody, for making this so much fun for all of us. It's a little exhausting, but we're having a great time doing it. Now, you have to remember that all of us are, you know, we're working a day job and coming home and working all night and working through the weekend. Uh, well, not working, <laughs> but having, having fun with the special event. Uh, it's not like we are at the expedition where we're doing nothing but uh, uh, getting on with the special event. But it's exceeded our expectations, and everybody, everybody has been... Uh, uh, very kind and had very complimentary words. And Bob, I mentioned this on the hundredth anniversary. So, so much fun to hear people like the guy I talked to in Rome, who told me he's a big fan of Ham Nation, watches it every week, and I'll say hi to him. <laughs> and uh, uh, the guys in New Zealand who are Ham Nation fans, uh, both on the North and the South Island. Um, they were a guy in uh, Belgium who was helping out by spotting us on the European clusters. And uh, Austria, another uh, Ham Nation fan. So it's global. And when I would go and say, okay, how about Europe? How about the Pacific? The guys in the U.S. would say, hey, Al, what about the U.S.? <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> so they just well, pull you. That's right. Anyway, great excitement. And I know you've experienced it, Bob. And uh, everybody wants to talk to you wildcard guys, too. 
Well, we were having fun also, and uh, I I would call for YLs, and uh, uh, here was one of my or cool ones. This is the QRP guy, and check this. I called for QRP, and listen to this. Hi, Sierra, Bravo, Papa. I'm on a Tintac scout running eight watts over here down here about three twelve miles west of uh, eight watts. And the pileups there were also immense. Eight, eight watts, amazing. Uh, let's see, anybody else running QRP? This is K9EID. Hello, Charlie Nye, uniform. <laughs> Those are pileups with QRP. I, did, I got a big kick out of that. And I know they did too because everybody stood by for them. I really, really appreciate that. Well, Al, again, thank you so much. And uh, we'll be looking for you tonight. You're going to start off on 20? I'm going to start off on 20. I'm going to go to 75 and then back to 40. That's my plan. And by the way, follow Ham Nation 40 on Twitter because we tweet every single contact. Every time I make a contact, or Dale does, both of us, we tweet what frequency we were on, who we worked. And when we find out where Bill or Cheryl or any of you guys are, we also send that out on Twitter. And then there's the hamnation40.net. That's our 40meter.net webpage with the live video from all of us. And uh, we all hold up little signs saying what frequency we're on and where you can find us. <laughs> so there, that's all ways What's to find that? Give us it's, that address again slowly. What, what, where is the address? Hey, you only got one T in my man, my name. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> hamnation40.net. Hamnation40.net. And uh, got it. Okay, you'll you'll see Whoa. the three videos live. Well, we'll look for you after a while, and thank you so very much. We'll see you next week for the 200th show of Ham Nation. So there you go. And uh, Gordo, how do we um, how do we top all of this? I just I just don't know. It's it's just such an amazing happening here. And you and I started this show off uh, 199 shows again, and I'm going. Oh, I figured we'd have two or three shows, and here we are. So Gordo, let's hear a little bit from you and see a little bit of what's going on out in Costa Mesa. Okay. Well, tonight, Bob, I plan to operate about 10 kc down from our uh, valued net control station. So I know you are doing the same thing. So we'll see everybody after you work uh, the uh, main net control station, drop down about 10 or 15 or 20 kc, and you may find a wild card. Well, speaking of wild, it's coming up in about three weeks, and that is field day. And Brian, if you want to go ahead and bring up Field Day Short Shots from Old Gordo. And uh, these short shots will give you a great idea as to all of the excitement that's happening in a field day. And as Brian is coming up with uh, that first short shot shot, um, we want to say that um, <clears throat> Field Day is open for everyone. And um, here in um, the uh, Costa Mesa area, I want you to notice that's a three-element beam we're flying on the backside of uh, uh, the van. But uh, have your field day station so that when newcomers come on scene and they go, what's all this? They've got someone there to greet them. Greeting that uh, person coming on scene is good. And what we use is the Heil Bluetooth microphone into a well-shielded PA system, and that allows us to walk around and sort of give an update as to what's coming on on a local PA. And we'll tell you why we do wireless on uh, that frequency. What occurs is on amplified speakers at field day, the RF from the nearby antenna is going to get into them and destroy reception. Even though you've got top quality uh, speakers that have an amplifier built in, that amp cannot, even with filters like this, be expected to keep the RF out of coming over the audio. So leave all those DSP uh, speakers behind and go with just a straight speaker with a choke on it like you see here. Uh, if the amplified speaker will pass audio without amplification, that's good, but most do not. These are quality amplified DSP speakers, the best, but not at field day where there's very little shielding and sometimes grounding is a problem. On your field day site, it's always good to let other people hear what you're working rather than an operator with headphones on that all you hear is barely his side of the conversation. So work up a Y adapter, bring tons of little jacks and plugs, stereo and mono, 
And that way you'll be able to take the audio that's also coming out of your headset and bring it to a local speaker. And I like this particular Heil headset because operators can switch out very quickly just by unplugging at the headset. So on your field day operation, have a radio that you can see the LCD display as well. This is the ICOM 9100 and the display is sharp as a tack in the bright sunlight. But you want to make sure that if you have a radio with the older LEDs that you can see it as well. And again, here we have separate headphones and separate microphones, but that ties up one hand. And you may need uh, more than one hand when doing logging. Now, look carefully and you'll see coming out of the headset uh, a paper towel wrapped around the microphone. That's because we lost the little wind cover. Make sure you've got wind covers on all of your field day microphones because you'll need it when the wind picks up. <clears throat> also, if you've got a computer, uh, it's okay to have a, a storage box uh, to hide the uh, display from the bright sunlight. <clears throat> but here's a nice pro box. Looks good when lookers uh, look in and see what's going on. So make sure you can see if you're doing computer logging that computer ahead of time. <clears throat> Uh, there's our amateur television guy, uh, Don Hill, and he's uh, looking at uh, the radios getting set up. He's got his map uh, in front of him. Uh, Chip Margelli, K7JA, has got the big ICOM radio, and he's ready to roll with his uh, field day setup. <clears throat> and um, uh, there's George. Uh, he's all set up, and uh, he's got tied into his radio. Make sure you've got all the right plugs before you head out. <clears throat> the field day because each rig has its own requirement and for those of you doing cw you can fold up the mic and operate cw without any wind noise at all <clears throat> that's yelly crap and um, two hands and a foot switch is a great way to go <clears throat> to be able to read over what you're reading and be able to operate and uh, see the computer so make sure you can see that computer screen during the height of the field day uh, activities that are going on. Now, the big headphones, yeah, I love them. We used to see them, uh, big ones like this, nice for a home station, but they were a little on the heavy side. <clears throat> uh, aircraft uh, headsets uh, have uh, been the norm, so you can hear over all the noise. So thank you, Bob and Sarah, and all of your design engineers. The Pro 7, this is a great headset. And uh, this headset just does a fabulous job of keeping both the background noise at bay so you don't get disturbed and you can hear the DX and a microphone element that uh, will not pick up a wind noise with the included wind sock with it. There's our uh, Quartz Fest organizers, uh, Heather and Dave, just doing a great job and having a good time with a big Pro 7 headset. Make sure, though, if you got the Pro 7, that you get the accompanying jack that will take it to the proper radio you plan to use it with. You get that at the same place that you get the Pro 7. Oh, my gosh. If I wear the Pro 7, I won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Yeah, that's tough to uh, try and talk with uh, something in your ears. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Brian. Your radio maybe has what we call money. Well, you ever wonder what money is? That's monitor. Push that button. <clears throat> Increase the monitor gain so you can hear your own transmit. Plus, remember, you've got audio coming out of that external speaker to feed the audience that's looking over your shoulder. And for field day, you will be one happy camper. So we encourage all of you to start thinking about field day. Begin to amass all your stuff. Good news for those kids that are getting started. Uh, Heil, Bob Heil's uh, company now has headsets that fit Kenwood or one that fits ICOM, one that fits Yesu, one of the Chinese Beofong. And uh, the headsets are lightweight. Uh, you can either have them left or right, depending as to which side you want the uh, ear on. And again, they come with the plug already attached so you don't have anything bulky. And they just came out and we did some trials of them and we love them. Finally, make sure that you've got a foot switch for field day. If you're a foot switch operator, this is the only way to be able to get on to field day. And I have a switching network to a preamp 
that I needed actually two switches. And I found that uh, through high health sound, they make a two cord foot switch. So when you press down on it, it actually keys two different items that you have attached. But again, for getting started with handhelds, remember you could operate field day with handhelds on uh, uh, the uh, FM 146.55 and 58, 445.446 simplex. Um, look into the headset. Look up here, it tells you what radio it's for, and get your kids outfitted with a headset, and that way they'll feel right at home and will enjoy all the action. So that's our field day report for this week. And, Bob, I'll be on the air, as you will, right after uh, this show, down about 10 KC, likely on 40 and maybe 20 if uh, Al keeps the band open for us. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> That's great. Well, I'm so happy that everybody's getting set up for field day. We're going to give you more uh, information here in a week or two about what's going to happen down in Jonesboro, Tennessee at West Shum's Farm. That's just a wonderful thing that's oh, going to yeah. happen. Piece of history. Piece of history. Uh, Nick will be on with us. Nick Tusa that's setting it all up. Well, we want to go down and talk to Don. Don has had a a uh, horrible week or two, but he's had a great week or two, but he's been shopping because he had to get a whole new station. So there you are. Don, first of all, personally, how are you doing? You and Don okay? Everything uh, come up okay? You might want to clue some of the guys and gals in that might not know. Yeah, everything is good, Bob. Thanks. Now, we took a lightning strike, for those of you who may not know, on the 15th, Friday night. Uh, the 15th. My wife and I were actually down on the coast in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi at a concert. My son, Tyler, 15 years old, he was home alone. And the lightning hit my off-center fed dipole, uh, blew the ballon right off of it. Strange, though, because it left the, the actual hanger that the two wires attached to physically. That's intact. And the little pigtails are hanging down where it goes into the ballon, but the rest of it, gone. In fact, here's what's left. This is um, <laughs> Emmett, Emmett at Radio Waves yeah. like this. He said, I, I texted him a picture that he said, that was a pro line. Yeah, it was. I mean, you can see, I mean, that's all, that's all, you know, potted and, and, and but look at the burn marks in that. I mean, that it just, it's, it's just, it's, it's toast. So that came down the line, went right into my TS-2000 and it oh, was no. attached, it was attached um, with oh. an RT systems cable to the back of my computer. And that's, that's, oh. yeah, that's, that's where the lightning came in. And, of course, it, that RS-232 jack right down there uh, was attached. That's where the RT systems cable was. And that went into the back of my computer. That's the, uh. the RT systems cable. It blew the plastic off of it and actually blew the substrate off of the, the circuit board and burned that. Which, so that toasted the computer and everything that was attached to the USB on the computer. It fried that. It fried um, all of the mini receivers on our direct TV. Uh, direct TV setup. The, the main DVR was okay. That was fine. But the three minis that we have uh, for the Genie system, that was fried. Of course, the LNB in the in the dish was fried. Let me throw that down there. Um, let's see. We lost uh, an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, uh, my TV, my son's TV, and it was over six thousand dollars worth of stuff. And the insurance check is here. And uh, oh. unfortunately, depreciation means you know we couldn't get. Um, I, you know, a lot of good stuff, but we got stuff that was at least as good as what we got. And, you know, the good thing is some prices have come down in the last few years on technology. So that's good. And um, uh, a lot of help from uh, from friends helping me get uh, get stuff back together. Uh, Ray Novak at ICOM is helping me tremendously with uh, with a radio. So um, on a budget, which is, is good because I need that. And, um, and, and life is good. We're getting back together. New computer, new webcam. New mixer, um, new attitude. <laughs> so yeah, no, all is good. And and I'm I was sitting here, I was doing a little shopping. I was going to spend some money. Um, I, I need a new power supply, and uh, I've got a uh, that was fried as well. Um, so, but anyway, this DX Engineering, you you want to get stuff. This is this is a great place to get it. And not only, you know, they got the newest radios and antennas and tools and stuff, but you might want to think about doing a little housekeeping while you're at it because station performance isn't all about having the newest the best of the best or the hottest of the hot or the latest of the late it's about regular care and maintenance of your gear that plays a huge role in operating efficiently even if it's just dusting it off every once in a while 
You'd be amazed. You really would. And DX Engineering has begun carrying high-quality cleaning sprays and solution from CAIG, including Deoxit. If you've been around electronics, Enna, you know about Deoxit. Deoxit D5 should have a place on every technician's bench. It's a unique contact cleaner. It will rejuvenate electronic gear. It enhances conductivity. It dissolves oxidation and corrosion on metal surfaces. It also fills in microscopic gaps and reseals the metal surface for improved electrical continuity. It's also been proven to reduce arcing, RFI wear, and abrasion. If you've got uh, uh, dirty pots or something, this stuff works great. And if you've got gold-plated connectors, DX Engineering recommends the Deoxit Gold G-Series spray. Use it on all the new gear's critical services. Uh, the G-Series spray protects both the surface and the base metals, and it's ideal for preventing dendrite and fretting corrosion. And CAIG recently introduced a contact cleaner wash. It's an economical solution for cleaning and improving electrical connectivity and switches, relays, contacts, and connectors. It's, uh, the, the wash evaporates quickly. It's safe for use on plastics. It's an excellent way to care for your mobile and outdoor installations. You can visit dxengineering.com to see all the cleaning solutions that CAIG offers. And if you haven't gotten your new spring, summer 2015 DX Engineering catalog, you can sign up to get it for free at dxengineering.com. Haven't got mine yet. Been looking for it. I'm going to have to go online and sign up for it, I guess. ARRL's VHF contest is coming up next weekend. So if you need VHF gear, get your order in this week. And even if you're not a contester, the propagation conditions are perfect for working uh, the uh, two and six meter bands. But the window's closing, so you got to get on it. And DX Engineering has tons of high quality VHF base station antennas in stock and ready to ship now, including M Square's 2M18 Triple X Yagi. Gives you an amazing 17 dB gain. There are also plenty of 6 and 2 meter antennas from Cushcraft and JK antennas out there at DX Engineering. And of course, DX Engineering gets it to you faster than anybody else in the industry. If you get your order in by 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern, and it's, if it's in stock, they'll throw it on a truck. Well, they won't throw it. They'll carefully place it on a truck. It'll be headed your way tonight. With proven products and expert advice, DX Engineering helps you shrink the globe. So go online, request your catalog, or shop online 24-7. It's dxengineering.com slash ham nation. dxengineering.com slash ham nation. Great people over there. Awesome people at DX Engineering. We thank them so much for their support of our little dog and pony show we like to call ham nation. Okay. This is normally the spot where we do amateur radio news line. Well, it's kind of on hiatus because Bill is still in the hospital. Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, who is the founder and the editor and the chief cook and bottle washer for the last 17 or 37 years. That's how long Newsline's been around, 37 years. Got some good news today. He is out of ICU. And uh, to quote the text that I got uh, from uh, good friends of his there, doing much better. So, yeah. Bill, you're in our prayers if you're watching. And uh, even if you're not, I know someone's going to pass this on to you. And uh, uh, we hope to have you back at the reins very soon. And uh, uh, we're doing our best to uh, keep things going. It's uh, it's not easy because, of course, uh, like uh, like Al said, you know, we all have full time jobs, day jobs, and uh, those of us in broadcasting, of course, we wear more than one hat. You know, uh, Skeeter Nash, N five ASH, he is the uh, morning guy and program director of his radio station, and uh, I am production director of our eight radio stations. So it's uh, <laughs> it's a daunting task sometimes to uh, keep up with it, but we're doing our best, and hopefully. We'll be back on a regular schedule. We normally have Dr. Tamitha Scove with us, too. She, however, has had computer issues, so we don't have a solar forecast this week. But go to spaceweather.tv anytime, and you'll see her last, um, I believe uh, last Thursday was her last video. So if you go to spaceweather.tv, you'll be able to see what she posted last time. She is, however, listening. She's on her, her drive home uh, in California, and she's listening. So hi, Dr. T. We're missing you. So that's what's going on around here. And uh, I wanted to give you a quick heads up. We're a couple of months out, but because this is the beginning of June, it is the beginning of hurricane season. And uh, Brian, if you see there in the dock, I, I put a link to the Hurricane Katrina 10th anniversary wow. Mississippi special event. It's www.katrina5h.com. It's the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina coming up in August. Uh, this is a special memorial event. Not just a special event, but a special memorial event. April 26th through September uh, 2nd, 235 people plus did not survive Katrina's fury. That's just on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. That doesn't include New Orleans. It's being held to honor those who were impacted by Hurricane Katrina when it struck the Gulf Coast on August 29th, 2005. Uh, a lot of people lost everything they owned. Uh, a lot of lives were lost. We also want to honor the hundreds of volunteers uh, who came in 
to help and actually are still helping 10 years later. Uh, it's being held to honor those who were impacted when it hit the coast. Uh, so just uh, we'll have one-by-one uh, uh, -one calls. K for Katrina, and then uh, you fill in the rest. Uh, K5H in Hattiesburg, uh, K5J in Jackson, uh, K5L in Long Beach, Mississippi, the K5M Memorial Station. Uh, that uh, uh, is, a, is a special one. So uh, uh, go to that website right there, and you will find all the information you need to know. And, again, that's coming up in August. I just wanted to give you a little heads up on that uh, Hurricane Katrina Memorial event. Not just a special event, but a memorial event. And that's important because... Well, I lost my home in Katrina. That's why we now live in Mississippi instead of New Orleans. So uh, if you can get out and work that, uh, they've got some really nice uh, QSLs. And again, go to that website, uh, which is www.katrina5h, katrina5hotel.com. So uh, thanks, Brian, for putting that up. It uh, uh, should be a good time. So let's, uh, let's head up to uh, Jackson, Mississippi now, where, of course, one of those stations is going to be. And uh, George, W5JDX, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Oh, good evening, Don. And let me just say that new camera looks so, so clear. It's amazing, isn't it? it scared me half to death. Well, me too. <laughs> I, you, you know, and listen, if you, if you listen, just, well, listen, this, this is the first, this is the first ham nation that you're able to see me really, really clear. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to get ready to do a screenshot. You ready? Do a screenshot right now. See okay, what screenshot? I mean? Screenshot. Okay, now print that out, and if you tape that to your refrigerator, you'll never see another roach in your kitchen. So there. <laughs> little, oh yes. Oh, it's it's better than the things you plug in the wall, huh? That's right. <laughs> Shh, that's our little secret. Don, you were talking about deoxid. Look at here, what I've got. Look at this you. This can is so old that it has faded. This stuff really works. I mean, um, I learned about it from uh, continental transmitters, the people who make uh, shortwave transmitters and AM, FM broadcast transmitters. It, it really does work. It's uh, yep. a miracle fluid almost. It used to be called cramelin. That's, that's what it was when I first got it. Mm -hmm. And then there's, they called it Pro Gold for a while, and now it's deoxid, and there's several formulas of it. But it, it, seriously, it's good stuff. Yes, it is. Well, I tell you what. I, I'm working on a new project over here. I've got all the parts, but I haven't got it built yet because I thought we might want to talk about it a little bit and uh, why you would want to balance. So let's take a look at that. This week on Smoke and Solder, with the help of Joe Zielinski, KC8LQ, we're going to begin talking about balance. A valon is a device that allows unbalanced transmission line to properly feed balanced antenna loads. A one-to-one -one ballon will match unbalanced 50-ohm coax to a balanced 50-ohm dipole antenna. Ballons can be constructed to change impedances. A one-to-four ratio ballon will match a 50-ohm coax to a 200-ohm off-center fed dipole. Ballons can also be used in reverse. A one-to-four unit can convert from 200 ohms balance to 50 ohms unbalanced. Ideally, a balanced antenna, such as a 40 or 80 meter dipole, should be connected to a balanced transmission line. Coax cable is unbalanced. The transmitter RF current, which flows up the center conductor of a coax line to a dipole, will flow into one half of the antenna. However, when the transmitter current that is simultaneously flowing up the inside of the coax shell arrives at the connection to the other half of the dipole, the current splits. Most of the current will flow into the second half of the antenna, and some current will undoubtedly flow down the outside surface of the coax shell. In effect, the outer shell becomes a long wire antenna. The current flowing on the outer surface of the shell is the common mode current. Common mode currents are typically produced when dipoles are not perfectly balanced, and few, if any, are. One thing to note, a change of antenna SWR as the length of coax transmission line is changed signals the presence of common mode current. We may refer to the shield outside surface as the common mode antenna. The common mode antenna will radiate RF. That RF flows down near the ground where it causes RFI to your television sets, computers, stereo systems, and other electronic devices. 
When the common mode current is large enough, it can be felt by physical touch flowing on the transceiver case and microphones. In addition, common mode radiation will modify the antenna radiation pattern somewhat. But your common mode problems don't stop there. In the reverse direction, the common mode antenna receives radiation from power lines, computers, TVs, and any other radiating device nearby. Thereby, it increases the noise floor on the receiver. The dipole antenna will probably pick up some of the same radiation, but it's high up in the air. The common mode antenna comes down to the ground where the RFI is more intense. By using an adequate ballon, a transmission line can feed a balanced or unbalanced dipole and reduce or eliminate common mode effects. Bifiller transmission line ballons will provide balanced output from an unbalanced coax line. The two general types of ballons are voltage and current. Both will work, but the current type is superior as it forces equal current into balanced or unbalanced loads regardless of voltage and its current that causes radiation. Ballon construction can take several forms, but the bifiller ferrite choke configuration has good symmetry, good choking action, and is simple and cost effective. It's this choking action of ferrite toroids that isolates the unbalanced input signal from the output, thus allowing conversion from an unbalanced line to a balanced load. The ferrite material which is employed in the toroid chokes is Ferrite Corporation number 31 mix. The number 31 mix has the ability to extend choking action into the lower HF region. Ferrites are brittle, so if you drop it, it'll shatter like glass. As a toroid, ferrite material exponentially increases both the inductance of the wire wrapped through it and the inductively coupled resistance by the number of turns squared. The associated capacitance is increased only linearly as the number of turns. It's the resistance which is important because resistance reduces common mode current, whereas inductance mainly shifts the resonant frequency of the common mode antenna. Two poplar ballons are the one-to-one, -one, which is typically used to feed wire dipoles, such as used for 40 and 80 meters, and the one-to-four, which is used with the poplar off-center fed dipole. The one-to-one -one ballon can be made with one toroid and one bifiller transmission line, while the four-to-one requires two toroids and two transmission lines. Both ballons are constructed by simply winding two wire transmission line through one or two toroids a specified number of times. Add connectors, connections, and a housing for a complete ballon. Why would you build a ballon when you can buy one? Well, the simple answer is because you can. Ham heritage is always involved building equipment, and there's that inexplicable pride that comes from making something by yourself. The constructor will actually know the quality of the material and construction that's in the box. And Don, you, you have a, a ballon there, I believe, that you just showed us. Yes, I hope mine does not look like that when I get through with it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's cooked pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Well, I'm going to show you how to build another one in the coming weeks here. We're going to build a one-to-one -one ballon and a four-to-one ballon, and these are a really serious ballons. They'll handle legal limit, and we're, we're going to really do it right and uh, pull out all the stops to make some great ballons. Well, you know, last week I asked a question. We were talking about the Howell HMM, and I actually connected it up, and uh, we spoke through it. But what I wanted to know is um, the frequency response of a typical dynamic uh, hen mic is 150 hertz to 4 kilohertz. What is the frequency response of one of these Howell HMMs with the dynamic element? Well, we had a winner. We had a lot of people uh, answer it, and uh, just about all of them got it right. But our winner is Chuck KF7WZV, and he said the HMM hand microphone has a frequency response of 80 to 15 kilohertz. And that's correct, Chuck. We're going to give you this Howl HMM. We'll be getting that out to you. And as I mentioned, we're going to sweeten the deal and throw in this Howl sound cap as well. So uh, thanks for your answer there. And for next week, I've got another question. And 
That is, what does the term Balin mean? What does Balin mean? If you think you know, well, I'm going to give somebody a copy of this Morse code breaking the barrier book, uh, a great book from Dave Finley, N1IRZ, and it's courtesy of MFJ Enterprises. So send your answers to me, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could win. Just tell me what Balin really means. And we'll be back in just a minute, but right now let's get a message from one of the sponsors of Ham Nation. Get out and get mobile. Whether you're looking for a handheld, mobile, or HF rig, ICOM has a radio to get you operating on your next adventure. Take ICOM's IC7100 D-Star radio with you this season. An angle control head and touchscreen provide user-friendly operation. A large internal speaker delivers clear digital audio, and it's perfect for multiband and all-mode communications. Interested in easy hands-free operation when you hit the road? ICOM's analog IC2730A mobile and the D-Star ID5100A both feature optional Bluetooth capability, a large backlit screen for high contrast viewing, and 50 watts output power on both VHF and UHF. Go far with ICOM's D-Star Dual Bander, the ID51A+. Check out the Near Me repeater function for D-Star as well as analog repeaters. Free downloadable RSMS1A Android app plus integrated GPS. Hit the trail with ICOM's IC7410. This HF rig is solid in performance and construction. High-grade DSP, all-mode operation, easy menu and ergonomic dials, and large heat sink for a heavy duty cycle operation. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's complete line of amateur radio products. And we want to thank ICOM and all the sponsors of Ham Nation for making the show possible. You know, without them, Ham Nation wouldn't be here. Well... We're going to do a little contest here. You know, you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat uh, for some great swag prizes like T-shirts and hats. And you can also learn how you could win the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. And for May, the grand prize is the ID5100A dual band dual watch mobile with touchscreen D-Star GPS, a repeater lift up function, and a lot more. Our winner is Craig, N0MFD. Congratulations, Craig. They'll be getting that right out to you. You're really going to enjoy that radio. But we've got another one for June, and that's going to be the IC2730A, the practical analog dual band dual watch mobile with 50 watts on both VHF and UHF, large, easy-to-see display, optional Bluetooth headset, wideband receive, and a lot more. So if you'd like to win that, uh, go over to icomamerica.com slash hamnation and register to win. So sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow Icom America Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. And just a note here, you know, Icom was streaming a lot of the sessions from Dayton Hamvention this year. You can find those now on the Icom America YouTube website. Uh, They've got the Contest University sessions. As a matter of fact, session number four uh, featured Bob talking about enhancing contest station audio. Uh, they've got the D-Star InfoCon uh, videos there, the Antenna Forum, uh, the Youth Forum, and if you'd like to see the live stream from the ICOM booth uh, that Amateur Logic did, that's over at amateurlogic.tv. So we appreciate ICOM for making all those sources available to us because... Uh, we couldn't get to all of them, so we'll go check them out now and uh, see what we missed. And I guess that's going to uh, do it for me this evening because we've got more people to get on here. And I was looking at my radio just before uh, I got on here. 14.254 was wide open. Well, it looks kind of busy now, so if I can find a spot on there, I'm going to get on for a little bit, and uh, a few of you who'd like to get a wild card on your scorecard there for the special event, uh, give me a call. Just look around. We'll we'll be somewhere near the other net controls. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dale, and we're going to see what's going on video-wise tonight. Okay, George. Well, thank you very much. I tell you what, uh, what's going on uh, Twitter-wise. Just got a tweet from uh, Christian. Uh, K0SHT, uh, I believe, 
Uh, he's going to be operating on 72, 78, he was telling me. And uh, he was getting ready and calling CQ right then. So this was just a few minutes ago, 72, 78 for Christian. Now, we're going to hope to fire up on 72, 84 in a few minutes. Uh, but uh, tonight, it's all Ham Nation Bicentennial Celebration all the time. Uh, we've preempted Angel Santana's report on the International Radio Day uh, event in Puerto Rico and Show Me Your Shack to make room for two great timely videos from Larry WD0AKX in Albert Lee. He's up in Minnesota. And first, here's how Larry heard the pileups. Small sample of the pileups they're stirring up. This is Whiskey One Hotel W1H in the Bicentennial Broadcast Special Event. Angle Well, it's hard to imagine how hard it is to pull a few call signs out of these gigantic pileups until you do it once or twice. And it's amazing how you hear more after you've done it for a few days. But here's how it works when you are successful. Larry worked three of us at one time on the first night of the Ham Nation 200 special event. Ham Nation Bicentennial Broadcast Celebration. Well, the Ham Nation show is over tonight and the guys are on the air making contacts. It's going to be a matter of busting the pileups here. Oh boy, is there a pileup. We'll see if we can make contact. Whiskey Delta Zero, Alpha Kilo X-Ray. Yeah, I'm glad to be here too. Greetings to everybody. It's Bob Heil. Go ahead. Okay, Roger, Roger, 71H. Al in the Hat City, Danbury, Connecticut, W0H. Dale in Goddard, Kansas, the center of the country, K9EIV. That's Dr. Bob Heil in Pleasant Hope, Missouri, and Whiskey Six Hotel in Kilroy, California, the garlic capital. Got all of us here. You can get, you can get four in one. We're going to work them here. So uh, let's, let's see if uh, we can get a hold of Larry. Albert Lee calling Albert Lee, Minnesota, WD0AKX, Whiskey One Hotel. Hey, are you with us? Uh, good evening, Al. First of all, do you copy WD0AKX? I do. WD0AKX, Whiskey One Hotel. You're about 10 over 9 in the Hat City, and you know, you're in the log. Well, that's great, uh, Al. Great to get in here. It's uh, it's hard busting that pileup, you know. And I'm doing a video here. Hopefully, maybe sometime we can show it on Ham Nation. We'll have to see how it turns out here. Larry, by the way, for those of you who don't know, makes some of uh, some of my favorite videos. And Thanks, he, he Al. Really gets out there and gets involved with Ham Radio and just gets hands on and uh, does all kinds of interesting things. So uh, just like check him out on YouTube and check out some of his videos. I think you'll like him. All right, Larry, why don't you get Dale? Why don't you get Dale a call? Okay, very good. Uh, Dale, W0H, uh, do you copy? Uh, just out, Larry. You're 5'9 and plus, actually, on those two short whips out in the past. You're sounding great down in uh, South Central Kansas. Uh, good sound with Bob Heil and the Hat City. Good sound with 5'9, copy, Larry. WD0AKX. Back to you from W0H. Okay, thank you very much, Dale. You're 5'9, real solid here tonight, also. Thanks for the contact. We'll make it quick. Let's see. Let's uh, go to see if Bob copies K9 EID. Do you copy me, Bob? Well, I copy you just fine. <laughs> Good to hear you, Larry. You're about 10, 15 over. Got me really well. And yes, I, uh, I agree with Al that the videos are always great. At least this one, you won't have to be standing out in a snowstorm. That's right. <laughs> Nice day here today. Congrats to work all of us. And uh, thanks for all you do to help keep all the fun going. This is K9EID. Okay, thanks very much, Bob. And we'll see what we can come up with on this video here. 
And uh, good signal here tonight, Bob, uh, real strong also. Let me see if Mike copies uh, W6H. Do you copy me, Mike? Okay, real good. You're sounding good here too now, Mike. So uh, thanks for the contact. I guess we got four of you. Wow, it could be Gordo's on there too, <laughs> hey, Gordo? <laughs> Hotel. I hear you Bob, I wonder if you'd do us the honor of uh, leading off uh, the next, the next uh, quick round of uh, stations. Uh, Listen to that pilot. We've caused a sensation. Okay, I talked long enough and I got out of that. We're here about 10 over 9 here in the Ozarks. What's your name? Uh, good evening, Bob and everybody else. This is Kilo Bravo 8, Queen India Delta, Joe, about 30 miles east of Cleveland, Ohio. 7-3, and thanks for watching WD0AKX. Thank you for uh, bringing the special event experience home to our Ham Nation video segment viewers. And to all of you who took the time to bust the pileups and to earn the certificate or earn the Clean Sweep endorsement sticker, thank you for your patience and the great feedback on the air. If you'd like to hear what we heard at W0H, we'll be posting a link to a recording on the K0HYD Ustream channel at hamnationvideos.info. The activity in that video starts at about 30 minutes in. It gets uh, more frantic uh, every minute until the end. So uh, <laughs> enjoy if uh, you're so inclined. Well, on the next video segment, we hope to present a video showing the statistics behind the Ham Nation Bicentennial Broadcast event. And we'll present Angel Santana's International Radio Day video, as well as another Show Me Your Shack. Uh, we'll hit 40 min uh, meters here in just uh, a few minutes and operate until the close of the event in the central time zone at 12 midnight here in the Wichita area. But first, we've got another super DX segment from Valerie. And she's been on there uh, operating since the event started. In V9L, uh, we're going to bring her in. Val, uh, have you been enjoying the Ham Nation 200 special event? Absolutely. I had no idea it was going to be this big. The pileups have been crazy insane, but... It was so much fun. At one point, I actually got up to 167 CUSOs in, in a 60-minute period. So oh, uh, wow. I haven't seen pileups wow. that, like that since I went to Saba. It was great. And even uh, when we were at uh, spy, the ARRL Centennial, towards the end, uh, it, I, I just couldn't believe it. It's such, What a success. What a great uh, idea you guys came up with there. A lot of fun. Well, anyway, I'm going to hey, talk Valerie, about... I, I, yeah. I have a question. I have a question for you, Valerie. Okay. <clears throat> we are experiencing this, and many of us are novices at working big pileups. How does the pileups, uh, how do the pileups that you've heard this week, how do they compare with some of the things from Navasa or some of the major D expeditions? Well, Jerry did listen in on some of my pileups, and they were amazing. You guys, all, everybody had amazing pileups. Um, it's not quite like a, a top 10 DX. Uh, entity like Navas or Amsterdam, he said it's probably about double that and maybe 25 kilohertz wide. Uh, so you can barely pick out one letter of a call. But I mean, what was nice about these pileups, there was always one or two calls you can kind of pick off the top. And that, I found it real similar to when I was on PJ6, um, which were amazing pileups. And I love it when there's always one you can pick off the top or two off the top. So uh, it was great. I just love it. I wish this would go another week. Uh, five yeah. more hours. <laughs> darn it, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Did, how well, many... Anyway, uh, I did have someone tell me, uh, November 3, Kilo Hotel Kilo, he sent me an email. He said it was harder to break my pile up than Kilo 1 Navassa. So <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but it was fun. Well, anyway, as 
I'm going to keep our logging uh, seminars going. And with field day coming up really close, I thought uh, my next one I'm going to showcase would be N1MM+. Plus. So, Brian, if you want to go ahead and roll that. I thought I would showcase N1MM+, Plus as the next logging software for you guys. Their website right here. And you're going to want to click and download their software. This is free to use, uh, which is a big bonus. And it's very easy to use. You can also use this as a DX logging software, although you will not be able to get any kind of printable report of uh, DX that you still need. Um, so once you're done downloading that, you're going to see an icon on your screen like here. And you're going to want to double click that and open it up is configure your radio ports. Um, so I'm configured my radio ports here. I'm all set properly. There is a lot of helpful tools. Uh, this is probably one of the more difficult parts of setting things up is getting that radio uh, connected to your computer uh, so they can talk to each other. Uh, so once that's done, you're going to click OK. And you're going to want to configure your station data. And this is where you put in your call sign, your name, address, your grid square, CQ and ITU zone, all that kind of information. So once that's in there, you can click OK. So now you're going to, all you see here is this main screen. You're going to want to start adding some different screens uh, to view whether you're in DX mode, field day mode, or any one of the contests. So that you can do from the window here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our Telnet. This is our cluster. So we're going to connect to our cluster. And uh, you're going to see once we connect to the cluster, another thing you're going to want to view is your band map. Now, if you are not assisted, you cannot connect to this. Otherwise, you will be put into the assisted category. Um, and so what this will do is any spots that it finds over here, it's going to populate them over here. So like right now I'm on sideband. I'm, I'm spinning the little wheel on my mouse to make it expand or contract. So you can view it all at once. And uh, I want to put that up first because we're going to start to see a lot of call signs populate. So you're going to want to set up a database. That's the first thing you'll need to do. So go to File. And you're going to want to create a new database. Call it N1MM. So now I have a database created, and in here I can put as many contesting logs as I want. So we have a database, now we're going to want to set up a log. So we want a new log in our database, N1MM. So we're going to click that, and here's where you can pick from many contests. Look at them, they're all alphabetical. If you're going to do a state QSO party, you need to go down to QSO party. Right there. And then from there, you can pick over here and drop down to the state or 7QP or New England. Um, so there's all kinds of different things there. You can also pick field day as an option if you go to the Fs right there. And you can set it up for field day. So I'm going to set it up for DX. So that way, a lot of spots will populate. So now that I have it set up for DX, I'm going to be assisted. It really doesn't matter. You're DXing. And hit OK. So now any DX that it shows on the cluster over here is going to start to populate here. So we'll slowly wait for some DX to populate on there. There's one right there. Now all I have to do is click that. My radio goes right there. If I were to double click a button, not only will my radio go there, but it'll put that call sign right in my logging field. Uh, but first, let's get our logging software up. We want to add more screens here. The more you can have up here to help you as tools, uh, the easier it is for you. We'll put up the log. That's going to list my log. Now, you can make this as tall as you want. So you can show as many as you want. I usually just like to show my last seven or eight QSOs. Um, another thing you're going to want to view if you, especially if you're in a contest, is your available multipliers. It's going to start tracking how many multipliers you have on different bands. So if you're working in a contest and you're on 10 meters and all of a sudden you look over here and there's 24 multipliers on 20 meters, it might be a good time for you to switch and go get those multipliers. Another thing you're going to want to add to your view 
is your check log. Now, what this is, this is a, a, a super partial check log of all active call signs out there who DX and contest. So as you start to fill in part of the call sign and say you miss a letter, say we do like Kilo Bravo 5 and it's got something with echo in it, there's all the Kilo Bravo 5s with an echo. There's Kilo Bravo 5 Echo Zulu and Kilo Bravo 5 Echo November Papa. So that can help you too when you're trying to pick out some weak signals out there. And the last thing I like to show is info. And this, and then you can design this and move it around. You Maybe you prefer to have this over here. You can do this and set it up at however you want. And every time you log back into N1MM, it's going to reset this whole screen here just the way you like it. Um, and then when somebody else logs in, if all of a sudden uh, WB9Z gets on here, it's going to put the screen up to however he left it last and how he likes it. So it does store different call signs preferences so it'll always be that way for you. This is nice. This is going to give me my QSO rate over one minute, 10 minutes, and 60 minutes. You can play with this and put other different ever, other things up there too. You can have your score summary sheet up there. Maybe make it smaller. But there's really no need for that because you're going to see it down here at the bottom as well. Um, so there's all different kinds of windows you can put up here. Um, so you can have a CW reader if you need help with your CW. So now, as you can see, some spots are starting to show up here. So I'm going to, instead of just click this once, I'm going to double click it. So not only did my radio all of a sudden change to 14.246, it put his call sign right in there for me. Since you're doing DX only, you don't have to put any kind of uh, exchange in there. You can, if you want, put their name or any comments. Or you can just uh, give the signal reports and hit enter. And he is logged down there. Now say he comes back and corrects the call for you and you already hit the enter and he's down here. You can still fix it. You can fix anything you want by here by double clicking whatever you want to fix. See, you can click... And right from there, you can just fi fix it there. Now, if you have Kilo 7 UGA on multiple bands, it'll show below this all the different uh, other bands you've worked them on. And you can fix it across the board right there at, the t at, at uh, one glance. So that's kind of name. So maybe he's uniform Bravo Alpha instead. So you can just fix it right there on the fly. But say this one shows up uh, Lima Alpha 4 uniform Oscar Alpha. And you see another spot for this is... Uh, Lima Alpha 3 Uniform Oscar Alpha, and he's really Lima Alpha 3. If you don't keep coming back to this thinking it's a new one, you can right-click, and you can remove that spot, so that'll be gone. What? Let's. I can click there, go work that guy. And once you're done working all your call signs and your contest is over, uh, one of the things you might want to do is rescore it. It's going to go through the whole log and rescore it in case you made any changes. Uh, but this is really not a contest. It's just DX, my DX log. So once that's all done, uh, one thing you can do is you can look at your max rates. Um, and when you're ready to submit your log, you can go in here and generate your Cabrillo file right from here. It's going to make sure you have the right scent exchange. There is no scent exchange. I mean, in, in field day, you're going to have a scent exchange. And then you just want to say, yes, that's OK. And it's also going to double check that you have everything else set up. Single op, assisted, all band mixed, high power. And I'm going to do OK. And then I'm going to put that in. I'll just overwrite an existing file here. And there you go. There's my Cabrillo file. And that's what you're going to want to submit to the contest robot. Um, and it'll come back if you have any errors, but one good thing to do is look at all of this. Make sure nothing's missing here. Make sure everything looks good. So that's done. And another thing you're going to want to do is upload this to LOTW. Hopefully all of you uh, watched the uh, videos I did on LOTW and are set up there because that's really a nice thing to have. So you can export this as an ADIF. Or if you have a regular DX logging software, you can go ahead and export this ADIF file. Um, and make an ADIF. And from there, that's what you can use to uh, get to do the TQSL certification, upload to LOTW, or pull that ADIF, import that into another logging software you may have. And that's pretty much the basics for N1. All right. Well, hopefully that helps you guys out, especially if you're going to be using it for field day. 
Um, as far as DXing goes, it's summer, not a lot of DX, but you know what that means? Six meters is open. So matter of fact, it was open today to the Gambia in Africa. Uh, I know Jerry worked them as well as a lot of other nine landers, eight landers, and three landers. So that was open to Africa on six. So that's pretty cool. But uh, there is some semi kind of rare countries that have some special events coming up. Uh, Brian, if you want to show that one slide I have, this is the world's first and largest space launch facility. And in honor of that being 60 years ago, can you believe that? 60 years ago, this launch facility was built. And uh, that was known, that's where they launched Sputnik. And uh, Yuri Gagarin uh, obviously was launched from there as well. So I just can't believe that was 59 years ago that Sputnik got launched from there. So they're going to be on the air only till the 6th. And their call sign is right up there. It's uh, Uniform Papa 60 Space, up 60 space. Uh, so I bet they're going to have a cool QSL card. I don't know what it looks like, but I bet it's going to be cool. And they have a really large team of operators for this special event. They even have a YL up on YL up on that special event. And then there's also the European Games going on. And that is the 12th through the 28th of June. And that is in Azerbaijan. And they have a special event going on the 12th through the 28th. And they're going to be um, four kilo 2015 Echo Uniform Golf, which stands for European Games. So um, that would probably be a cool one to get to if you need Azerbaijan or Kazakhstan. Uh, contest, we have the 1010 PSK contest going on this weekend. Also, the Alabama CUSO party is this weekend. And next weekend's a fairly large contest, and that is the June VHF contest. Now... The key to, to getting some good points when you're working the VHF contest is to make sure every time you get a contact, push them through to all the other bands that you have on VHF, um, and that way you can get a lot more multipliers. But that's all I've got for uh, this week for DXing and contesting. So I think we're going to head it over to Amanda. Hopefully no lightning this week. No lightning. It's uh, It's been nice. Uh, actually, more than nice. It went from winter time to summer. No springtime this year, Val. That's for sure. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you so much. And you guys, I've had a blast too working uh, as a wild card this week. And I owe it to these guys right here. This was wonderful. This little button, never, ever <laughs> underestimate this phase in and phase out. Bob, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I I picked up yes, stations I, I couldn't believe. Yes, I do. It was, it was amazing. That's why I put it there, and most people don't understand it. But uh, you get in a big pile up, and you can move the weak signals back here and the strong ones up here. It's, 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 it's a phenomenon, but it's all about an acoustical platform. And I don't know why more haven't done it, but uh, sure is helpful, isn't it? It is. It was the most amazing thing ever. And I was using my PR20 and I said, okay, you guys, wait, just stop for a minute. I'm going to switch this over and use the headset here. And the next contact came in and said, I told, I could tell a 180 difference of what you're doing and, and how you sound. And, uh, and I picked out so much more. So you guys don't under underestimate those uh, pro sevens. They're great. Thank you so much for those, by the great. way. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Those pileups, uh, wicked. Um, you guys, uh, I loved working all of you, loved talking to all of you. I wish I could have spent more time being more personal to everybody, but you know, that's the way it is. We want to make sure you all get a chance to work those wild cards. So, um, anyhow, I'll try to be on 40 tonight. No lightning in store for me, no thunderstorms. So, um, let's move on here. Um, Okay, Mr. Gordo, we got you on and you weren't here. You didn't stay through last week. And I had another question for you about field day because you are our field day antenna master. So, Gordo, with that, how do we or how do stations like a 28 Alpha, a 28A station, how do they handle all the interference between those stations on field day? <laughs> well, a 28 Alpha, that's going to be a lot of transmitters on the air. Remember, they have to be on the air simultaneously to be able to get that uh, field day uh, number 28. Um, what we normally do is uh, bring all the coaxes into a center area, but encourage all the antenna experts to get their antennas as far away as possible, use very low loss uh, 
from uh, the uh, DX Engineering has great low loss uh, uh, LMR 400 type coax, even some double shield, and uh, work out the band so that those that are harmonically uh, related uh, are not right next door to each other. So when someone's on seven, they're not causing a second harmonic on 14. So it's just keeping the antennas as far away as possible. That sounds ideal. And we do that uh, using a three alpha station in our field day with our club here locally. And I'll tell you, I still hear CW if I'm on 10 meters and they're on 15 meters. Give me one helpful hint to help me avoid that. Um, you could go over there and ask them not to transmit. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> nope. Your best bet is to uh, think about some of those uh, band pass filters. And if you don't have a band pass filter, uh, get an old antenna tuner, a big rotary inductor antenna tuner. Tune the tuner to the band you want, and you'll find that if it's got a big coil on the inside and big movable caps, uh, the effect of that tuner will be to block other bands at least uh, uh, a megahertz away. So when you're on 28, you won't hear anybody on 21 with that big antenna tuner acting as a band pass filter on the band you're operating on. Perfect. So you say stop using the um, the auto tuners on your rigs and bring over your separate ones. I have like a, an MFJ 986. Would that do the job? Uh, it would, but if you had a big old Johnson matchbox, that would do better. You want a major sized antenna tuner for very deep skirts to pass the band that you're on. Very good. Thank you, Gordo, for that insight. I, I really appreciate that. It does help a lot. And yeah, we've always used the auto tuners right inside the, the rigs that we've had. You know, we're running 100 watts or less. Uh, we think that we would have no problems, but it always tends to be a problem. So appreciate that, Gordo. Nice to have you on by the at the end of the show this week. Um, Mr. Bob, actually, Dr. Bob, I should say. Um, someone in the chat room <laughs> had asked uh, about they have an IC7000 in their truck and is, are wondering if there's any Heil microphone that they could probably buy to um, make that work with their IC7000. 7000 is a great little radio. The only problem is it has a very low gain mic preamp. Sad, but that's true. And we build an IC element specifically for that. That's why we call it IC. It only works on ICOM. So the HMM IC, the ProSet IC, the Pro7 IC, ICM, anything with an IC in it works great. But you can't do it with a dynamic because the mic gain is just too low. So you have to uh, take care of that. Hey, while I have it... Um, Somebody's asking about the certificates. It's going to take a while, guys. Don't be <laughs> be patient, I guess is the words. You'll get your certificates, but it's just think about the many thousands that they have to go through. I saw that a while ago. And uh, one of the things that you want to do if, is make sure you put attenuation. I did not say an attenuation. It's the same thing as Balam and me. It's not an attenuation. It's attenuation. We want to attenuate the... Uh, the signal coming into your receiver because you have all this huge signal coming in from the pileup, attenuate that a little bit. I usually run about 12 dB of attenuation on low frequency. I do that all the time. And then back down the RF gain a little bit, and you'll be amazed at how it cleans up because if you don't do that, you're going to overload your receiver, both the front end and the audio. And you do that, and you'll be able to hear hear better. But uh, that's that's kind of the the key when, when you're on the HF bands, and it really works great. So uh, that'll be a little help to you. And I'm sure you do that, don't you? <laughs> Amanda. Okay, so you, you know we have two operators in the shack, and I wish Jeff was sitting right next to me so I could just poke him in the ribs right now. Right now, he told me last night, I'm not even kidding you guys, this is just last night, he said, who messed with my RF attenuation? I'm not, RF gain <laughs> is turned smoking all the way to the right. And I had it down mid-level the night before that. Perfect, perfect. And yeah. 
Yeah. I wish he was in the room right now with me. I'm telling you. Okay, so it, I'm <laughs> when I operate, it's going to be in the middle. Um, I appreciate that, Bob. Thank you so much. Um, Val, I do have a question for you, too. Um, not to leave you out of the loop here, you mentioned the VHF contest coming up next weekend. Do you, do you also participate in that? I try to, yeah. I, I, I'm going to see if I have time to get on and, and do that. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, li I like I like contests, so I try and get on to whatever you, I can. Hey, I wanted to show you this, too. This is um, a good uh, bandpass filter for field day. Oh, yeah. Um, that we use. Oh, yeah. And we got this baby, too. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't go the right way. There you go. So... <laughs> nice. There we go. <laughs> um, but they work What's great. Brand we now, have two right? stations here, What's... and uh, so it works great for us. T tell tell everybody what the brand is of that. Uh, this one, Array Solutions, and I think this one's an MFJ. What is this? Yeah. ICE. This talk, is an ICE. And yeah, the other one's an MFJ. Talk about the array solutions, the I mean, model number solutions. and all that for them. Okay. It's, uh, oh boy, it's heavy. Array solutions filter max four bandpass filter system. Uh, this is a heavy duty go. one. Thanks. Yeah. That's, that's the king right there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <clears throat> and so uh, Amanda Gordo here. Here it is, the HMM for your mobile operator. <laughs> This is the mic. That's what they awesome. want. Just be sure and get the right element, uh, the I for ICOM, the IC, and be sure they get the right matching plug to plug into their 7000. Back to you, Amanda. Okay, you guys. So I have to say, Jeff just walked in the room and he's plugging in the antenna or his uh, headphones right now, Bob. And he's embarrassed because he's in a tank top. So don't mind his uh, whiteness here. Bob, just repeat real quickly what you told me a couple minutes ago. I told him what a great engineer you are. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what he said, Bob. Come on. Come on. He okay. talked about okay. He talked no, we're about talking this about you right must run here. The R, with all of this RF coming in and these pileups, you need to attenuate about 12 dB or so, lower that level coming in and run the RF gain down so that you have a little bit better, uh, a little bit better uh, listening ability because it's not overloading the front end. And, uh, and it's not overloading the audio system. And that'll really help you to attenuate a little and always roll that RF gain. I usually roll it down. I use it as a volume control. I really do. I set my levels on my volume controls here. And then I use the, the RF gain for a volume control. And it's always down about half to three quarter. It really helps. should try it. It really works. Did you copy that? Thank you. He says, Roger, oh Roger, Roger, Roger. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Hey, guys, that's all okay. the questions I have for tonight. And I look forward to working the VHF contest next weekend as well. Very good. Well, I, I want, um, before we leave, um, I want Brian to bring up a, a site. I want you all to uh, take a look here. This is a new Midwest AM uh, uh, bulletin board, whatever that they're putting together. And for all of you interested in AM, uh, check this out. It's, it's really good. And they're just starting it up. And, and it's going to be a lot of help to uh, some of the guys working AM and some of you that uh, want to know a little bit more about AM. Uh, this was put up by uh, several guys, uh, N8SDR and KC9QJE. So check it out, guys, because you'll uh, get a lot of information about AM from that. I just wanted to let you know. So that's all we got from here. Gordon, anything else that you can add here at the end of uh, this great uh, historic program of number 199? Wow, our last 199er, and we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Uh, we'll figure out who that secret uh, guest is going to be. I can't wait to hear it. And, Bob, we'll see you next week, and uh, uh, we'll try and tune in to you and all of the gang up in Chicago on AM tonight. Okay, very good. Well, I think I'm going to end up on uh, somewhere about 7231. It's really quiet in there. And... Uh, 
we'll uh, we'll make things happen from there. So thank you to everybody, all of these special event operators. And uh, we'll see you here next week on Ham Nation. Pass the word. It's a very historic night uh, because it's going to be our 200th show. Who would have thought that uh, the little thing we put together with the Twit Network and a couple of folks, one of them being Gordo would last this long. So thanks to all. I will see you next week here. And in the meantime, we're off to 40 meters. Bye-bye for now from K9EID. Bye. 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 Too long.